Pat's Two Cents. Listen, this is about the coronavirus, and some of you are being extremely careless and defiant. You are putting so many people's lives at risk. And I'm going to make this short and sweet, but I want you to hear what I'm saying. There was a woman who was invited to a wedding in Belize. She was from Los Angeles. She knew she had the coronavirus, but she wanted, wanted, wanted to go to the wedding. Now, I don't care what your wants are. You have got to deny yourself for the sake of everyone else. It's not all about you. And this woman put a whole country at risk because Belize had nobody in their region with coronavirus. And she marched to little happy hips up in there and infected the atmosphere with her coronavirus. And now everybody's up in arms because now health workers, healthcare workers have to take care of her with her coronavirus that she should have kept in her own household. And she carried it to another country. You have got to be careful what you do, what you touch, where you go. Some of you want to go visit your grandbabies. You really want to take that chance. You could be signing their death warrant. Don't be so doggone selfish and self-centered. This thing is not a plaything. It's not a coal that comes and goes. And I don't mean to holler at you, but some of y'all need to be hollered at because you don't take this thing seriously. What if it's the judgment of God? And you defiantly decide to go and do what you're big and bad enough to do. God can snuff your light out just like that. It'd be the last act of defiance you show. Putting other people at risk that he wants to keep alive. What are you doing? What are you guys thinking? I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're in politics, if you're in religion. I don't care what kind of leader you are. This is not a plaything. Some of you need to be arrested for murder because you know you got the virus and you're going out and being around other people anyway. You're playing Russian roulette with other people's lives. And after you're dead and gone, look at all the people that are going to have to suffer because of you. God help us with these hard-headed folks. What did Jesus say to Satan when Satan told him, go on and jump off. You got angels that will gird you up. You won't get hurt, in essence. Loose paraphrase. What did Jesus say to Satan? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. For those of you who don't believe in God, you're tempting faith. Either way, you're tempting. Why put yourself in danger's way? Why put others in in dangerous way just because you want to do this or you want to go there or you don't want to miss out on this that or the other you feel like some of you think that because you're born again christian you got divine protection well baby let me tell you something years ago and this is a quick story years ago i had a car and i knew that I needed to keep that car parked because I couldn't get to the insurance agent till the next day. Car was paid for in cash, 3,500 bucks. Sat up there and gave a person a ride home. Had been running errands all day, feeling like there was an assignment against me for an accident. What did I do? I did the Christian thing. I prayed, I bound, I rebuked. I took authority. Yes, I did. I moved out in faith, right? And guess what? When I took the guy to take him home from doing work at our house, what happens? The car gets totaled. Neither one of us are hurt, not a scratch. So God did protect me, but I had to suffer a major loss because I presumed 
on his protection when he was instructing me to stay home. I knew I shouldn't have driven that car without insurance. I knew I shouldn't have left the house when I felt that warning all over me. But I didn't take it seriously because I was moving by faith. So what happened? Five years of trying to figure out why did God allow the car to be totaled when I did everything in the world to take authority and pray against it. And after five long years, the Lord finally cracked this hard shell and said, hey, dummy. He didn't call me dummy. Check this out. And he replayed the whole day. And every incident, every feeling I had was that feeling was me wanting you to stay home. That feeling was me wanting you to stay home. That close call was me. The th second close call was me. The third close call was again me wanting you to stay home. You chose to go out against my advice. My prodding was for you to stay home. You presumed on my protection. My protection was you obeying me telling you to stay home. Some of you, the only protection you got is them telling you to stay home. Some of your pastors, some of your leaders, some of your bosses, some of your parents, some of your children, some of your friends, sisters, and brothers will die because they refuse to stay home and they presume on God's protection when God's only protection for some of you might be to obey the laws of the land, might be for you to obey what the heads of state and the specialists are telling you. The Bible says there is safety in the multitude of counselors. If you don't listen to counsel, you die. God says my people perish for lack of knowledge, not for lack of my protection, for lack of knowledge. Why? Because you resist knowledge. You reject knowledge. And you got folks out there that know way more than you do with your little pea brain. I don't care if your pea brain gained a, a doctorate degree. You don't know jack about this virus. Stay your butt home and make everybody else you know stay home too. And quit being so doggone hard-headed. I'm telling you that in love. Because there are too, too many people dying and too many people at risk. So unnecessary. My, I used to hear this old expression when I was a kid. A hard head makes for a soft behind, baby. And the Bible says, pride cometh before a fall and a haughty heart before destruction. How long are you going to be hard-headed and prideful? presuming on God's protection when God's protection might be you being obedient. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Exodus 12, 12 and 13. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. I just want to ask you a question. How many of your family members, how many of your church members, how many of your co-workers, how many of your friends have to die before you do what you have to do to keep everybody safe? This is an individual thing, but it's a team effort. 
And it's only as each individual cooperates that this thing can die down as quickly as possible. God, I pray that you wake us up, Father, out of our stupor in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to take this thing seriously. (laughs) We've been spoiled and entitled for so long. We don't know what it's like to suffer. And I ask you, Lord, to protect those from the hard heads that won't stay away from each other, that won't stop going out in the name of Jesus. Protect those, Lord, that aren't sick from those that are in the name of Jesus, Lord. Build up our immune systems, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Have mercy, Lord. 